In this video lecture, we're going to look at how to send data to a CGI script using a hyperlink. Now, a lot of times a web page will have form information that the user will fill out and then submit, and then that gets sent to a form to be processed. But there may be times where a form is unnecessary uh, or a link might work better. Now the idea behind this script is we're going to create a page of states and when we link it, our script is going to show us the name of the state and then the capital. So right now this script is only set up to just go to our CGI script and display some text that says the capital of and is. So we've got the basic foundation here, but we're not getting any information passed to our script yet. So I'm going to go in and look at the HTML for this page. And you can see that we have a hyperlink and it's going to our CGI script right now located in the CGI bin. Yours may or may not be there depending on how your web host has it set up for you. But it's going to go from my state's HTML page to the CGI bin and then find states.cgi. So let's look at the state's CGI script so far. So we have it set up. Here's our uh, shebang line with the path to Perl and we have our print content type when we're going to be printing HTML and we have the CGI Perl module to parse data for a web page and then we have a print statement that is just printing out our text that you could see in the result the capital of and we are looking to get the state information in from our hyperlink and we also are looking for the capital information to come in from our hyperlink. So we're printing out a print statement and you can see this was showing up on the HTML page but the information for state was not showing and the information for capital was not showing. So in order to get stuff from our HTML page to our CGI script, as I said one method is to use a form and the form will send name and value pairs. But since we're not using a form, we can embed this information into our HTML link and that will get passed to our CGI script and we can set it up so that the first piece of information that comes in is state and the second form of information that comes in will be the capital. So I'm going to go back to the state's HTML page and just do a, a slight modification in here. And to send one piece of information, I'm going to append the URL that we're linking to with a question mark. Now the question mark is going to separate the file information or the file that we're linking to with some data that we're going to send to it. Now the script is, part, is set up to receive information called state. So to start off with, we're just going to do one piece of information and then we'll come back and do the other one. It's looking for something to come in called state with a value. So we're going to send it state equals and our first state name is Alabama. So now when the user clicks the link on Alabama, it's going to go to the CGI bin and find states.cgi and then it's going to pass in state equals Alabama. So I'm going to save this and upload it to my server and then I'm going to test the page again. Okay, I've uploaded it to my server and now I'm just going to refresh my page and you can see that the link information here has changed. The other ones look like it's been visited. But when I mouse over this one and you look at the status bar at the bottom, you can see the information of what we're linking to. It shows states.cgi question mark state equals Alabama. Whereas the other ones haven't been updated yet, it just says going to states.cgi. 
So when I click the link this time, it's going to send information to the CGI script and you can see up here in the URL line that it is passing in state equals Alabama, just what we appended in our URL, in our, in our hyperlink reference. And you can see that, yes, it did pick that up and print out Alabama. So let's work with getting a second piece of information. We want to print out the actual city that is the capital of Alabama. So back in our HTML, Right, we have one name and value pair that's being sent. And so when we're going to put in a second name and value pair, we separate that with an ampersand symbol. So now we say, okay, the first name and value pair is state equals Alabama, and the second name and value pair now is capital equals Montgomery. So now we're passing in two sets of name and value pairs. So the first one comes in as state in our CGI script and the second one is going to come in as capital in our CGI script. So let me just come back here again and show the first parameter that our CGI script will get is going to be state and then the second parameter that has capital basically this script is going to replace this with the value of what was passed in for state and it will replace this with the value that was passed in with uh, the parameter of capital. So I'm going to save my, my HTML page again and upload it to the server and I'm just going to hit my back button make sure that it is refreshed and now when I mouse over this you can look at the status bar at the bottom and see that state equals Alabama ampersand capital equals Montgomery so it's going to pass those name and value pairs to the CGI script so when I click this link now we have the complete information it did replace the parameters with the actual values that were being passed in from let me move this over a little bit being passed in from uh, our hyperlink. So our parameter and then the value and then another parameter and another value. So let's go back to the HTML. And Alaska and Arizona will work the same way. North Carolina will work the same. Well, what about Arkansas? Arkansas's capital has two words in here. It has it's Little Rock with a space in between. So let's try setting up our CGI script to make sure that if we have something with more than one word there, what how to set that up. So I'm just going to copy this information and paste it in here for Arkansas and just make a couple of changes. And so this is Little Rock. So let me save and upload that to the server and then we'll refresh it in the browser. Okay, so now we can see Arkansas has been modified and you can see the information in the URL line at the bottom. And now this time you can see capital equals Little Rock, but then it's got the percent sign and a 2-0 there. But we didn't type that in, we put a space in there. So what is that all about? Well, first of all, let's just check and see whether this works. So I'm going to click the link for Arkansas. And yes, it did work. The capital of Arkansas is Little Rock. And we can look up here and see the information that was passed in. But what was what went on here? What um, you might look at things and say, well, if I didn't type that in, what's going on with that? This is actually what's called URL encoding. So when we're sending information, uh, the browser encodes information. It's encoding it to send it to the web server.
So here's a nice reference for you, w3schools.com, and the full URL is listed up here. Uh, but when we talk about HTML URL encoding, this is what's happening when um, our information is being sent in the URL up here. So this is URL encoding. And you can see here that it converts characters into a format that can be transmitted over the internet. Spaces can be a problem. So that's why if we had a space in here between uh, little and rock, we typed in a space. So it encoded it with the symbols for a space. So if we come back here and we look at this, re this reference, there's um, different ASCII character sets and and it has some nice little try-it-yourself things that you can test out. But right here at the top of the encoding reference, you can see a space, an ASCII space, is encoded with a percent sign, a 2, and a 0. And then these are some other characters that are encoded because they have special meaning to the web server. So if they're left unencoded, then they can be problematic. And also, a number of these are used in programming references, and so it can help to prevent um, some injections of code into your scripts that are being sent from a page to your web script. So the URL encoding is done by the web browser. Now something else that you can do instead of encoding a space in here is you can put a plus sign in and uh, to remove that space. And let's see what happens when we do that. Put an extra quote in here I want to get rid of. Okay, so uh, with our space removed and a plus sign in here, I'm going to save this and upload it to my server. Okay, now with the browser refreshed, if I mouse over Arkansas, you can see in the status bar, let me move that up, you can see a little plus rock instead of the encoding going on. So if I click the link, it still works. And here, instead of the encoding going in, we still have the plus sign. So the technique will work either way. It just depends. This is a little cleaner looking, so some developers like to use this in place of uh, the URL encoding going on. So we've set up links to send name and value pairs to the script and you can append multiple name and value pairs by separating them with ampersand symbols. And the reason again that you may want to do that is because sending something through a hyperlink that the user is clicking on as opposed to filling out a form might be a little more efficient depending on what it is you're trying to do and the interface design of your page. So this is a simple way of being able to build and just let them click to get information based on what they're selecting. And the user doesn't have to fill in a form uh, and then submit it in order to get the data.